Hi everyone, how is everybody? I hope everybody is safe during this time. So today I'm gonna share Pascal's triangle. That's the problem number 118 in lead code. And the problem statement is like that. Given a non-integer number of rows, we have to generate this triangle and return in the form of vector of vector. So if you look, this is also, this could also be described as a dynamic programming because every row depends on the previous row. And you start with base, base case, which is the for show here. So if you look, this, this number four is made up of three plus one, three plus three, six and four. And if you look, the zeroth element of each row is one and the last element is also one. So it's just a matter of figuring out how we are gonna get these inner values. So let's see how we can solve it. So first I'm gonna just develop a pseudo code, how algorithm works, and then we will put it in C++. So this could be used for any language, the algorithm we are gonna develop. So let's look how we are gonna do that. All right, guys. So here's the problem. The input is given as a five, which means five rows and we have to develop this triangle and return in the form of vector of vector of integer okay so it's the whole thing is going to be represented by a big vector and this inner vector is going to be the all the rows so this inner vector is going to be the rows okay so first just looking at the big picture stuff we are gonna need a for loop that runs for each row okay and then after going into each row let's say if we are in this row we are gonna need another for loop that calculates the element inside that row so on the big picture on the brute force solution we think we are gonna need two for loops nested for loops that's gonna be o of n square roughly speaking and since we need this triangle in this form there is not much we can do in terms of optimization but let's first develop that solution and see if we can optimize it or not so on the big picture we know that Okay, there are five number of rows, so let's call it i. This is row 0, 1, 2, 3, and number 4, okay? So we have to, and each row has a different number of elements inside. So row 0 has element number, total number of element 1, row 1 has 2, row 2 has 3, and so on. So each row has i plus 1 total elements total elements the coding or developing algorithm is more sometimes just finding a pattern if you look the zeroth element zeroth element of each row is one so zeroth is always going to be one and this last element is all also one so if you look what is what is the element so in this case this is element 0 this is 0 1 0 1 2 so if you look element 1 is 1 in i row. element 2 is 1 in the second row element 3 is 1 in third row so 0 and i element are always going to be 1 always 1 so when we develop our inner vector we can initialize the whole vector as one let's say if we are talking about i equal to two that's so we can develop this as one and then just go inside and change this element to two if we are developing third row we can keep this as everything as one and then change this to three and three based on this okay so that's our broad approach now we have to find the relationship that how we are gonna get let's say this number two right and as it shows in the problem statement that this two comes from adding this one and one so what is that two for two i is second row 
and the j let's say element is j j is one so that two is basically one plus one which is ith element jth row that's two and one and which is sum of the previous row which is i minus one and zero and one right element number zero of previous row which which is gonna be so so let's let's think about it this way so this two is what this is row number two right element one is sum of row number one element zero plus row number one element one this this here so so let's say if we want to develop find out how we are getting this if you look at the picture it's this just to, let me use another color so this row is just sum of this and this so let's say element row row number four element zero one two three third element is just the sum of row number three zero one two so that's the second and third row third element so from this we have to make a generalization let's say if i for i throw j j th element what is the generalization what is the equation like we can generalize right so this row is always going to be the previous row so you know this is going to be i so our job is to find the element and if you look for the third element we are adding third here second and third for first element we are adding zero and one so this is always zero one one three three so here we have to add j minus one so the previous row j minus one element previous row j element that's the generalization and always zero element and i element are always going to be one okay so let's see how we can write the proper pseudocode for this so what we can do is we can write a for loop that's let's say for each row this is that big for loop that i mentioned that's gonna go to each row and then inside that row we are gonna need another for loop for different elements so that's that bigger for loop for each row which is gonna start at i equals zero and gonna go to the number of rows the input given and it's gonna be i plus plus okay now when we go inside that row we have to develop this inner vector inner vector so oh, and we can de develop bigger like initialize bigger vector the big vector that vector vector int at the start that we are going to return that big vector big v here then we write that for loop and inside that for loop that's going to we are going to declare smaller vector that's just vector of int let's say small v and we are going to initialize is with all the ones but how many ones we want so let's see for zero row, how many ones that we mentioned total element is i plus one so for that smaller vector we need i plus one elements so for i plus one element initialize it, it with one so then everything is going to be one 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 and then we are going to override that inner values so now we can write small for loop inside that's going to take care of each element in that row and that for loop as we see that zeroth element is already one now because we initialize it that way and i is already one so we just need to take a worry about this inner inner values so we don't need to start j from zero we can just start that j with one instead of see our traditional zero and how far we have to go we have to go until ith element because as we mentioned as we saw here ith element is already one so we can go to the ith j do j plus plus and then we have to write down our logic that we developed here we can just write it down which is like smaller vector 
vectors j element or you can say big vectors i and j so small vector j element is big vector i minus 1 previous row j minus 1 from the above equation we developed plus big v i minus 1 previous row j element that's the equation and we can close that so for each row this for loop is going to go and it's going to do its thing once this once this for loop is done our inner vector is done we override that inner value so we can push this inner vector to the our big vector so that big v push back small vector okay and now we are gonna go to we are gonna go to outer for loop and do the this thing for different row and when we do that for different row this inner vector is gonna be initialized to correct amount of elements and with all ones in place so basically we are done here so we can just return we can close that shorter for loop do this thing for every row and once we are done with all the rows we can return the big vector here okay so basically this is our algorithm and now let's see how we are going to write it in c++ properly and see if it works or not in lead code all right guys so here's that c++ solution we, we initialize our big vector then that's big for loop that's gonna work for each row and inside that we are gonna initialize smaller vector for each row with the proper number of elements and everything initialize it to one and now this smaller for loop that's gonna take care of that those inner values that we have to overwrite because it's one right now based on our initialization so that small vector and this is the equation we developed but we don't have to start this j with zero because as you see this zeroth element is always zero and ith element is always zeroth element is always one and ith element is always one so we can start when nj is one and stop when we get to i and then after we are done for that row we can push that smaller vector into a big vector and return that big vector when we are done with each row so let's see run, let's try running it okay so see that it that works and if you submit this i have submitted it a couple of days ago and as you can see it's a faster than 100 percent of c plus plus solutions so it's okay I, and we cannot optimize it because we have to return it in this fashion so we have to run two for loops o of n square is not ideal in most cases but in this case we don't have any other solution so it should be fine i guess so all right all right guys thank you so much and maybe i'll be back soon with another lead code solution for you guys thank you